So you, you get contacted and you reached out to Congressman Matt Gates's office. Now, the I reason did. you re- the reason you reached out to Matt Gates's office is because Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene, as I said in the intro, were working with you to potentially have a hearing on the sexual al- abuse allegations against Joe Biden. You're not the only woman to accuse him of harassment. There were at least seven plus um, mm-hmm. who came forward when he was running. Yours are the right. most egregious, and I should st- state for the record, he vehemently denies them. Um, so they, as I understand it, Tara, wanted to um, take you, uh, my, and my, this is my understanding according to a Matt Gates source, uh, their plan, because they had sent a letter to the Senate on behalf mm-hmm. of you requesting any and all records relating to your allegations of sexual abuse when you worked for Joe Biden. You told me you did complain at the time, not about the yeah. abuse allegation where he allegedly stopped you in the hallway and hurt you, but about harassment that you were enduring at his hand. And you, you did go, you wrote it down, you made a formal complaint, and yet we've never found those records. And the, my understanding was that Gates's office and Marjorie Taylor Greene's office were trying, they had sent a letter to the Senate on your behalf, seeking any and all records of those allegations. And then they were responded to um, by the Senate saying, we're going to protect the the privacy of Tara Reid. We're not giving you Mm -hmm. your records um, because we need to protect her privacy. And that the Mm -hmm. next move was going to be to go with you to Capitol Hill, where you would sign a waiver in person saying, hello, they're acting on my behalf. I want those records. I've been trying to get those records every way I can. Now I'm going to try to get them through these two Congress people, turn them over, and that that was the next planned step for you here in the United States. Is that correct? Correct. But I think you could sign the waiver. Yeah. And they were going to hand in the notice. But I did sign a waiver as well online. But it's just a matter of if they you know, require it. So, But yeah, you were going to go in next- person and do yes. that and then have a press conference to tell people what had just happened. Correct. With Matt Gates. All right. Mm-hmm. So you're coordinating with his office about that possible next move, which may or may mm-hmm. not lead to congressional hearings and so on. You're laying the foundation, trying to get your documentation, which you were trying to get back when we talked three years ago yes. as well. Um, yes. And and then you fly to Russia. You're promoting your book. That Those wheels are still in motion back on Capitol Hill. And mm-hmm. when you get this warning, you call Matt Gates. What happened in that convo? Well, you know, I have to give him credit. Um, he's, I now think of him as quite a noble person because, you know, he didn't advise me. Um, he simply gave me information. I said, hey, look, I told him my information about the warnings I was given about being arrested at the airport or in transit. And um, I asked for immunity. Can I be you know, immune from this? Because I haven't done it, committed any crimes. All I'm doing is talking about the truth. And I feel targeted by the DOJ and FBI. This is part of, and, and ironically, one of the cases that I was going to, I was going to testify about my case, but I was also asked to testify with other whist- about the whistleblowers that are being persecuted by the DOJ and FBI by Joe Biden on a panel. And I was going to also participate in that, right? Um, so you know, I, we, we had that conversation about it and he basically said, look, I, I can't, can't, uh, promise anything about blanket immunity or immunity, but he said, but I'll tell you this, Tara, you know, um, I'm really concerned for your personal safety here because I know how these people operate. Mm-hmm. And I found that stunning. You know, he's a U.S. congressman. And as you know, one of the whistleblowers has disappeared. Um, and I think they're trying, I think as of today, there was new news that they're trying to locate that person, but they are so scared. I guess they they are trying to up, do this from underground, kind of like I'm trying to testify from Russia. But this tells you the mafia state that the United States is in right now under the Biden regime. Um, that we're well, literally scared. Let, let, let me ask you about that. Let me press you on that because does it? I'm not, I, I don't know what they've done or what they have you know done, what? but so far you know all we have it, is- you, you know, well, you, I, I, you interview so many people and you are so good at reading them, right? And people always tell you who they are. Don't you remember when Joe Biden had his mic off and he said, um, or he didn't know that he had the mic still on, excuse me. And he said on a hot mic, he said, nobody fucks with a Biden. And I mean, who says that? That, but but that's his mentality. And that's how this team works. That I mean, I have been under so many, and you know how many threats I've been on over the years. Mm-hmm. Over no, they've the tried years. to destroy you. The media has tried to yeah. destroy you. Yeah. And the left. And, so, so uh, and I can't pin it on Biden, saying. but 
Yeah, the, yeah. the audience should know that is real. I, I witnessed that firsthand. The left, the organized political left, went after you with a vengeance and tried to mm-hmm. smear you because you'd filed for bankruptcy, looked into your college records, counted up the credits. Did she really quite get over the line on her degree? She held herself out as an expert. Was she really an expert? I mean, they, you were trying to help domestic violence victims, and they treated you like you were chief abuser of, of truth. And look, right. that's what they do, but it was such a juxtaposition from Believe All Women that it was absolutely telling. So I I validate that whole experience for you. And it's also true that the Biden administra- administration has been targeting its enemies, for sure, mm-hmm. from parents who speak out at school board meetings who get the FBI potentially involved on down. We've covered all of that. But here, what yeah. we have as proof is two people we don't know who you say mm-hmm. were former American intel who said, be careful, there might be an Interpol red notice on you that could lead to your arrest mm-hmm. for violating sanctions. Matt Gates mm-hmm. saying, I don't know, maybe he's saying, I-, I don't know, but I know how these people operate and I, you know, I hope you're safe. That's not mm-hmm. exactly proof, proof positive of the Biden administration doing anything to you. Well, you know, it, it was for me as far as making a decision about whether I felt like I could just go home and not be walking into a very bad situation. Because right now under the current new laws, like if they were charging me with say the FARA Act, which that's the Foreign Registration Act, um, which is, um, you know, kind of speculation if that sealed case, if that's what that is. Um, If you're just that, that just means if you're acting as a Russian agent here in America and you haven't disclosed it, you could violate this act, go ahead. Right, it's an administrative act that's kind of a backdoor into the espionage, and it wasn't really ever even enforced until Maria Butina's case, but also January 6th, a couple of the cases, you know, where they designated people as terrorists. And now with Chairman O'Malley, that the Black Socialist Group, um, they've now been indicted. They're facing 10 to 15 years in prison, maybe. Um, And they've had their passports revoked. Uh, and that's Chairman O'Malley. He's 80 years old. He's been an activist, a black African um, American activist for 50 years. And he's not a Russian agent, but that's what the charges are. And they've been and in the indictment, they said he was sowing discord. Um, and because he was um, pushing back against the proxy war that the U.S. and NATO is waging against Russia via Ukraine. And for that, they three of them in that or I think four, excuse me, are now facing prison time. They've been arrested, indicted, whatever. So with this new law, they can hold people up to 18 months without even charging them. And you may not even get access to counsel. Well, guess what? The the election's coming and I'm just about to testify. What would Joe Biden love more than anything else than to have me silent, to have me put away, to have me not testifying before Congress, right? So I made my decision alone without anyone coercing me. So you're right. I, but I did it with looking at several data points and looking at listening to people and weighing it out. And I even like took notes and wrote it down and did pluses and minuses. I mean, I really thought about this. Um, you know, I didn't sleep one night just thinking and thinking about my options. And I really, so I, I analyzed it, but also I went with my gut and my gut was telling me, don't do it. You're going to walk into something bad. We reached out to Congressman Gates's office to try to get confirmation of this conversation. Mm -hmm. We were unsuccessful in getting any comment on that, though a Matt Gates source told us that he did express sympathy to you when you called Mm -hmm. him. Um, No ownership of suggesting. You know, and, and, you know, and I don't want him to become a target again because he was honest with me because he could have said, yeah, Tara, come on, get on that plane. And then I, you know, I would have had a different fate. But and he, by the way, he, did, did he know you were going to Moscow? Did he know? I told him. I told him exactly where I was. He asked where no, I was. But you, I did he know that you were going before the, before you went? No. Okay. So he, you called him up. He says, where are you calling from? And you say, I'm, I'm in Moscow. I mean, that must have been a moment. I'm in Moscow, Russia. My yeah. God. <laughs> was, I mean, was there, like, I just, as a human, was there like a holy, right moment? People are like, What? <laughs> No, he he just said, he knew, I I explained that I was there for the book and for an interview and that I was trying to get the translation done. And it was going out to not just Russian, but it was going out to French, Spanish, Italian. It was going out to all different, being distributed internationally. 
And we so should he, say, he, what? He, give me the name of the book he, again. He I have it here. Unfortunate. I think he said, I can't remember his exact words on that because I, but I think he said something like, that's unfortunate. And then I think he said something like, um, well, I can't go there because it's sanctioned. And I said, well, apparently I can't go either. Um, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. Um, but other than that, you know, he focused more on what he was trying to do to further the investigation into Joe Biden. And that was his focus of his conversation. And then and Tara, he gave me, give me the name of the book again, just so people know why there's interest in it. Sure. It's left out when the truth doesn't fit in. And it's about this whole experience you're talking about. Yes. And I'm having to add three chapters. So this will probably be a chapter. <laughs> Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan, and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax pros at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, even those who took PPP loans, and even if you had increases in your sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.